Good morning, Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church. You can see that on your screen, I hope, uh, if you're at home on the radio, uh, listening in, uh, same that message. We welcome you to our service this morning. We're putting together our full service so that uh, you can listen in and take out what parts you want. I learned a little bit of how to do that on my computer. Um, but whatever, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. Uh, we uh, are a church that likes to uh, sing, and we like to... Uh, uh, sing good songs uh, with with meat on the bones and and whatever. Uh, so, but first we and we offer little kids, and so for them we offer our, a couple of kids songs. And uh, the first one is Daniel was a man of prayer. Daily he prayed three times, and even when they had him cast in a den of lions, and uh, the guys that wanted Daniel thrown in the lion's den was uh, the only way we we're going to get him is because we got to get something between him and his God. And Daniel just continued praying. They made a law and talked the king into making a law that couldn't be changed because to change a law meant that you were not a god as the kings pretended to be. And um, uh, so Daniel was this man of prayer and he prayed three times and got in trouble for it, even being thrown in the lion's den. And uh, so let's sing that song. <laughs> Daniel was a man of prayer. He prayed three times, even when they had him cast in a den of lions. Even then, in the den, fear could not alarm him. God had shut the lion's mouth so they could not harm him. The next one then is Don't Build Your House on the Sandy Land. Uh, I was just reading that Pat just read another version of the Gospels and it says the, the, if, you're done, if you're not on rock you're fried it's going to shift and it's going to lose your house so be careful Don't build your house on the sandy land no, 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 Don't build it too near the shore Well it might look kind of nice but you'll have to build it twice Yes you'll have to build your house once more you gotta build your house upon a rock Make a firm foundation on a solid spot Oh, the storms may come and go But the peace of God you will know Let's go again Don't build your house on the sandy land oh, Don't build it too near the shore Well, it might look kind of nice But you'll have to build it twice Yes, you'll have to build your house once more Gotta build your house upon a rock Make a firm foundation on a stumbling spot All the storms may come and go But the peace of God you will know Okay, birthdays. Did anybody get older this week? Nobody? Okay, we all got older, but we're nobody's admitting to having a birthday. Well, if you're at home and you had a birthday, we want to sing happy birthday to you. And we ask God's blessing on your day, okay? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, only one will not do, born again through salvation, how many have you? And when we have Jesus come live in our hearts, our second birth, it begins, and that's our second birth. We have two birthdays, and our song reminds us of that. Thank you. Well, we are going to have some worship songs now, and uh, these are just songs to lead us into, just songs that uh, encourage our hearts. Uh, the world's all topsy-turvy and whatever. Our focus is to keep our eyes on the Lord, and that's the idea of this song here. I stand in awe of you. Uh, Jesus, you're beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, really powerful words in this song, and uh, so let's sing it together if we can. Who can fathom the 
our second one is, Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is might. Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is such a wonderful thought, uh, Jesus. You go through the Gospels. I was reading this morning uh, in the uh, Gospels, and uh, uh, the demon comes out of the cemetery, and he says, what have I got to do with you? And uh, uh, we know who you are, and the, the evil world, the world of darkness, knows who Jesus is. The world in which we live, uh, Jesus is often known as a, just a swear word in many circles, um, they, we've lost a generation of young people growing up in church and hearing about the stories of Jesus and his love. We're going to sing some songs about those this morning. And we've lost a generation of, of people that many don't really know who Jesus is, much about him other than a swear word. Uh, but his name changes lives and relationship with him. And, and we're told in the scriptures he's been given the name which is above every name. Uh, Jesus. Call his name Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. And that becomes the focus of our gospel, our, our Bible, and God's intent uh, with Jesus coming into the world is that that name would be given above all names. And God is, he's a God of, of justice and a God of love and all those things, but he's most importantly interested in us knowing his son Jesus. And it's such a powerful story when you read it from the Gospels and you pick up your Bible and read your New Testament. Uh, the story of Jesus and his love is portrayed there throughout. And uh, that name is power. And the demons, uh, they had to leave at just the, the, um, and, uh, with the use of that name. So be mindful of that, please, and thank you. We um, welcome you, and we just have some things we'll announce uh, as we carry on here. And um, what's going on this week? Well, we're shut down, but Friday we're hoping to hear from Bonnie Henry that we can next week, hopefully, Lord willing and praying with that God might do this for us, uh, have people back in church. We're here. Uh, Glenn's on the back. Karen's on the piano. Her and I are cohort, and uh, we have two church mice, and um, we have some little mice placed around for people, for the kids to watch for in the videos if they're watching as we're singing and uh, whatever. But uh, next week, we trust that uh, things might open up. But uh, we hear there's lots of COVID around, and uh, so um, we just uh, want that. Um, we just have to wait and see and pray and see what God does with that next week. Uh, the worship team wants to get back at least and do some worship, and so uh, hopefully we can work some things out. <coughs> so we are interested in that. There's another story that's interesting for us. Um, we, there's some little boys that are in Afghanistan, and uh, they have a connection to Chetwin through a girl that's the principal at the Christian school. And uh, she studied uh, Afghani under her, their dad. And uh, the Afghanistan story, they're in Pakistan, but her, their dad doesn't want them to go back to Afghanistan because they'll be put in with the Taliban, they figure, in the army. So they're trying to get them over here, and the SDA school is trying to bring them. And so they'll bring them as student visas to come be students, and then when they get here, they'll apply to be um, uh, refugees. And anyhow, uh, so we've got a plan there. Please pray for the story. Uh, the boys are grade 10 and grade 12, and uh, we come here, 
and uh, we've got the possibility of a place. We've got a possibility of a parent to live in that place with them. And uh, so it's, it's, it's an exciting story to my head. And we trust that we'll throw that with you and let you pray with that too. And that's going on this week. We'll keep a little more postings as we uh, get things worked out this week. So just be mindful of that. Pray for these two boys. I don't know their names or whatever. But there's a Chetwin connection in their lives. And uh, we're going to try to bring them here to save them from the situation with the Taliban army where they would be. Uh, put in. <clears throat> so, uh, I don't have any other announcements, Glenn, whatever. Okay, Karen, nothing. Uh, what's going on this week? Uh, all right, well, let's, uh, I have a funeral on Saturday at the Legion. You can remember that, please, if you would. And uh, there's been a lot of death in our communities. Uh, Kibsey family lost uh, Val uh, yesterday, and she finally passed away. And um, others uh, met with the Ross family there, uh, Elsie uh, uh, Ross's family some the other day and just pray for those people with the loss of their loved ones so all right let's turn to our screen and sing again this is my father's world here it is November 14th and we just got a bit of snow and uh, I don't know what the long-term forecast is but the fall has been beautiful and it's our father's world in which we live let's rejoice in this greatness this morning <laughs> this is my father's world and to my listening ears All nature sings and round me rings The music of the spheres This is my Father's world I rest me in the fog Of rocks and trees, of skies and seas And the wonders wrought This is my Father's world Our Father, we want to thank you this morning for the privilege to be able to put together a program of worship and adoration for your people at home, for uh, ourselves here, our church family that can tune in later. Uh, God, we bless you for who you are and the world in which you have revealed yourself and placed us here. Oh, there's those out there trying to run around and figure out whether there's life on other planets, and there might well be, but that's of no concern to us. We have a story of God and his great redeeming love to tell about and to live and to share while we're here. And so we ask you to help us to keep our focus on what you've put us here to do. And we pray, God, that your spirit would just prevail to touch hearts and lives and help people to understand that there is a name that's power. There's a name that's might. There's a name that was given above every name and that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to so we bless you, God, for your love and your care and for the world and the, the nice weather we've had. And here in the mid of October or November, we're, we're, we're just rejoicing in the first snows and much, and it might stick around, but uh, the winter is so much shorter. And we bless you for that. We ask, God, that you would encourage hearts that are those who have been, uh, had loved ones snatched away. Uh, for the Ross family, oh God, for the Kibsey family, Tricker family, uh, hold these loved, the loved ones uh, close of the ones who have passed and minister to their hearts and uh, be the God of comfort that is only you can be. My friend Marlon, be with him and his bride and uh, uh, their loss. Just, uh, just encourage their hearts and hold them close and keep them fathers in my prayer. Uh, we ask your mercies to attend to uh, those who are sick. And we pray for Eva Gerstle. She's up in Fort Nelson. And just hold her close and bless her. 
We thank you that she's got a good view. She's quite liking that. But others here in the hospital, all the Watson family, I guess, have had loss this week. And uh, we pray your mercies to attend there and raise up Bob and make his legs strong so he can get out and about and raise up Bobby and just uh, make her hold her close and bless her. And that'll be a blessing in Sereras. And, and others, just hold them close. Grandma, uh, just uh, make her a blessing there in Sereras as well. So we see where thanks God for your love and care and for this gathering we can have together in a small way to put together for the greater church to hear out uh, from outside our doors. Receive our thanks. Prevail upon the, the, the hearts of the government situation and then even the, the stats, I guess, is more important so that we can be open again and uh, be able to come together as a group and worship you and, and lift our roof by such joyful singing together. Receive our thanks for others who are sick and uh, laid aside and with the ailments of the COVID or whatever. Touch their bodies, raise them in health and strength, and just encourage them through this time with your healing touch. So receive our thanks and bless us in this hour for your goodness and care. We bless you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We um, will have our announcements there for uh, requests. Uh, we've got some changes there. Your requests for email if you have a prayer request or whatever you want to send. Oneprayerchain at gmail.com. And uh, we, we like to pray for stories. We believe God answers prayer. We hear and we, we hear stories and we see things happen. Um, uh, say well somebody challenged me one day so you just ask and God just does everything you say no uh, sometimes he says no and no is an answer to prayer and uh, but uh, we, we believe in prayer and we've seen lots of prayer answers uh, over the years and um, so we're thankful to pr for the chance to pray and put up and Ali does such a good job on the prayer chain requests and whatever there uh, e-transfers uh, chetwinbaptist at gmail.com that's changed a little bit from baptist at pris though you may still use pris for a while uh, we're changing our um, connections there chetwinbaptist at gmail.com if you wish to uh, help out with our, our ministry here that's much appreciated. And anything, uh, I saw an old lady this week in another town, and uh, she says, so what's, uh, how do you find your sermons and stuff like that? And I said, well, Chatwin Baptist Church. Just Google that and we'll find sermons and whatever. Uh, everything's out there, the wonderful age of technology. Just the world's going so fast. For my brain, it just makes me boggled sometimes, but um, I'm always glad for the techies I got, like Glenn and Karen. And, uh, and we're thankful. I, I wrote a note to Julie and kids this morning. Thanks for lending Dad. Um, to our setup of our service and worship and putting together this thing for each of you at home. We're glad for Glenn and his willingness, but also the talents that God has given to him. So um, there we are. Uh, no other announcements. We'll carry on. And let's go to our next song. And we have here, uh, Tell Me the Old, Old Story of Jesus and His Love. The story hasn't changed all the way from old times to now. Tell me the old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. Tell me the story simply, as to a little child.
that's a powerful song. All the different places it takes you on your deathbed, when you're young, whatever, need to know Jesus. And uh, <clears throat> uh, tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. We want to go to our scriptures this morning and uh, talk about a, a subject we've touched on before, the word and whatever. And uh, the word I want to consider this morning is about, a, we use the word affirmation. I had a funny thing happen. It was affirmation. Let me read you what, what we've written about, some notes about it. It says, affirmation is, um, when you look through all the different definitions of it, it's using of positive statements to encourage and motivate. It's using positive statements to encourage and motivate. Uh, one of the definitions of affirmation is you go into court and you say, I affirm that I will tell the truth as I answer your questions, Your Honor. So uh, that's an affirmation there. But this one here for in, in people's lives, positive statements to encourage and motivate. And uh, so parents use those with their children. Pastors use those, and we use them with each other. And, and my note then says this, all like it, most need it, but it varies with the person as to that. Well, I had a funny one happen this week. Uh, I'm allowed to visit at the hospital, and one lady I hadn't been able to see for quite a while, I, she wasn't answering the door if I give a little knock, and her daughter was in there this week, so I went and had a little visit, and I have my mask on, and I pull my mask down so she can see who I am, and she says, who let you in here? <laughs> and her daughter says, well, that's a nice, how you doing, Pastor Bill? But uh, I said, no, no, for me, that was good. This lady's a friend of mine. She knows me, and uh, I love her, and she loves me, and I knew that she knew who I was. And she said, who let you in here? That was an affirmation. You're welcome, my friend. And so I was blessed with that. Um, the town of Capernaum. Jesus entered there, and the scriptures show us that he did a whole lot of miracles there. Different stories he did there. And yet, this little town from which he did so much, he does not give them an affirmation. But contrary, au contraire, is, is the statement. Matthew eleven twenty and then 23 to 24 tells us about his unaffirmish, un, un, unaffirmation of the city of uh, there. Then he began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. And so he's talking about a bunch of cities, so that's what he began to do. And he talks about the Chorazin and other. And then he comes down in verse 20, uh, the verse 23 to 24, and there he says, and you, Capernaum, you will not be exalted to heaven, will you? You will descend to the grave for Hades. For if the miracles had occurred in Sodom and Gomorrah, those wicked towns that were destroyed back in the Old Testament and whatever, the, Sodom, if the, if the, the miracles had occurred in Sodom and Gomorrah, which occurred in you, it would remain to this day. Nevertheless, I say to you that it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the judgment than for you. Not much of an affirmation, but we want to consider this morning uh, steps towards a great affirmation, a great affirmation. In Luke chapter 7, 1 to 10, I come back, uh, I've been reading my Gospels again here recently, and some time back I came across this passage in, uh, in uh, Matthew's, uh, and I was mindful of part of the story there, and uh, now I come across it again in Luke and my heart was just blessed by it. And looking at this story of this man uh, involved, um, so these steps towards a great affirmation, let's ask God's help as we look in. Okay, let's pray together. Father, we thank you that your word helps us. It's written to be a love letter. It's written to be an encouragement. It's written to be an affirmation to our hearts of who we are in you, of what we enjoy in you. And we just thank you that this morning we have a passage before us that encourages us, affirms our hearts towards walking close to you. And we thank you for the wonderful story of Jesus and this great love. So receive our thanks and bless us in this time. Draw near by your spirit. And for those at home that listen, help them to be encouraged too by these thoughts. We ask your mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so here we have in Luke um, uh, chapter 7, the... Uh, Jesus has, uh, when he completed all his discourse in the hearing of the people, he went to Capernaum. And so here's one of the stories. Now, this has happened before the account in, uh, where, he, where he berated uh, Capernaum and the other cities. So he is, um, 
he comes to this town, and here we see Capernaum, and a satyrian slave uh, who was highly regarded by him was sick and about to die. So he comes in. He's got a guy who's, who's the captain of 100 people in the Roman army. <clears throat> so he's a Roman. He doesn't, he's not Jewish descent, uh, whatever. He's a Roman, and he's got a slave. And he's got high regard for this slave. He, he sees him as esteemed. He, the word honor is tied in there. The word Timothy, from where Timothy comes from, is tied into this regard that he has for this man. Um, but this man was sick, and he was about. And you know, there's, there's, different, there's another story where you read somebody who's going to die, and there's this one word for death in Greek. This is not the word that's found here. It's kind of a funny one. He says, his life was about to, to finish. Uh, the word where we see uh, Jesus says, I'll be with you to the end of the age. And that end, uh, the teleos. And that's where the word is tied in here. This man was sick and about to go to the end of his life. And uh, so that's kind of a strange wording we, we have there. Uh, so he, here's this man. But the first point we want to make about uh, steps towards a great affirmation is to have a high view of humanity. A high view of humanity. And uh, with that idea of a high view of humanity, this man here, he, he's a Roman so soldier, and he's got 100 people under him. And it's, but he's got this servant, this slave, and he loves this person, and he cares about this person, and this person is, a, is sick, and he's about to come to the end of his life. And, um, you know, you get to the end of your rope. Well, this guy here was coming to the end of his life, he says, and this guy was concerned. And so that's, that's the first part here, uh, the view. He's sick, but he's honoring. He's such an honorable, caring, a dear. He's dear to, to his master. Now, you know, back in the Old Testament, we talked about people were slaves, and if you're a slave, you're only supposed to be a slave in Israel for seven years, and then you were supposed to be let free. But if you really liked your master, he, 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 you didn't have to start a union to get decent wages, and whatever, he took care of you, and he loved you as a son in his home, and whatever. If you wanted to stay, then you had to go and give up your rights uh, to be a, a free slave. And they took a, a, an awl, they put your ear over there, and then they put, drilled a hole in your ear. And, and then you, you get to be a, stay as part of that family. Strangely, in the Roman world, if you were adopted into a family, they could kick sons out, daughters out, but they couldn't kick you out if you're adopted. And I understand if you adopt somebody and you have a will, you have to leave an adopted child something in that will. Uh, my understanding and connections have been around some of these situations. But here, beloved, the idea is to have a high view of humanity. We, we're all made of the same dirt. And that really makes sense that we're all the same age. We're just... How long you've been looking like you look is really the matter because we're all made out of that dirt. And uh, on the, that second, that whatever day it was there in creation, we're all made out of that same dirt. And so um, we have here this high view of humanity. And uh, what, you're no better than anyone else. That's the argument to try to uh, have a focus of it. What have you got that you've not received? Uh, uh, Paul challenges. And nothing is the answer. And so you're no better than anyone else. You, you, you're better use of your gifts and your talents and stuff like that. Well, you might have a little better energy and better use of, of that energy. Yes, but in the reality, the great scheme of things, always remember everybody is made in the image of God. Everybody has an eternal soul. Everybody has a, a, a challenge to have a relationship with Jesus Christ so that eternal soul spends where? In eternity with Christ. Eternity with God. And so to have this high view of humanity, here's a man, great, Romans, he's, well, I got this guy, he's sick. Is it just somebody take him out and shoot him, spear him, get rid of him, throw him off a cliff, off a building and do whatever. He could have done that, probably got away with it. But he loved this man, and he's got this high view of humanity, the first point. Verse 3 7 3 says, When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders asking him to come and to save the life of his slave. Now, the question is, where did he hear about Jesus? Well, if he's in around Capernaum, Jesus has been there, done a bunch of miracles or whatever. Uh, whatever. What has he heard about Jesus? We're not told. But he has heard about Jesus. And so Jesus is coming to town or is in town. Uh, so he's heard these things, it seems. He sends some Jewish elders asking him to come and to save the life of his slave. This idea, what has he heard? Did he hear that Jesus, oh, that man, Jesus, he's the guy that preaches that whatever you ask, if you ask, you shall receive. If you, if you seek, you will find. If you knock, it'll be open to you. Did he hear that? And therefore, I'm going to ask him to save my slave? We don't know what he heard. We're not told that. 
But he says, when he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders asking him to come and to save him. Here, I think, is an idea that he called in some favors. We will see in the next couple of verses in a minute uh, that he called in some favors. These Jewish elders, uh, he, he sent them. These are people that didn't really like Jesus. They're always trying to find a way to trip him up, catch him. And so they eventually would crucify him. And, but these Jewish elders, he asked them to come and to talk to Jesus about coming and saving the life of his slave. Do you see the picture of this man who at this point doesn't know that he's walking toward taking great steps towards a great affirmation by Christ, by God. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders. He called in favors, and the favors are told about are in verse 4 and 5. And look what they say there. He says, when they came to Jesus, so they went and did, as this man says. When they came, to, they earnestly implored him, saying, He is worthy for you to grant this to him, for he loves our nation, and it is he who built our synagogue. So they have a great interest in having this um, uh, Jesus come to help out. This guy wants this. Uh, what they believe about Jesus, we don't know. But he says, he's worthy for you to grant this to him. And uh, he's done a, In our eyes, he's worthy. You know, what's the Bible say about us being worthy? It says, he who has a good name is better than great riches. You can have all the wealth in the world if you do not have a good name. You, what are you worth? So he's worthy for you to grant this to him. He loves our nation, Israel, and it was him who built our, syn he who built our synagogue. So his soldiers and our guys, where everything's peaceful, quiet around here, go help those people build that synagogue. And, and it's he who was in charge, and, and, was seemingly, and he built the synagogue for the people in, in Capernaum, the Jewish people. So these people say he's worthy to be considered. He's worthy of having some help from you, Jesus. And he's called us in favors from him, uh, from, from us. Uh, favors we got from him, he's called back. Can you help me? And they've come and said, he is worthy for you to grant to him this. For he loves our nation, and it was he who built us our synagogue. We have people that come to Canada. I heard a strange stat. They said the states are way down in their uh, immigration, and therefore they got people who can't take the jobs. Well, that was interesting. Uh, we, we have to have immigrants in our country because, frankly, what's the story? People aren't having enough kids. People aren't having enough kids. And uh, uh, so we, we have immigrants come, and they take jobs. They take the menial tasks and whatever, and they come, and they work menial tasks until they can work their way up. And they're, they're hard workers, and they work their way up well. People come here and they love our nation. I uh, gave a young friend one time, uh, they got their permanent residency. I give them a maple leaf that I have, maple leaf leaf off my plant in the backyard. I have a sugar maple tree. And uh, uh, this maple leaf, and we put them in the laminator and laminate this nice maple leaf. And said, congratulations, you're a permanent resident. And she says, I want my maple leaf when I get my citizenship. And they love our nation. And they come, and they want to be hard workers and, and bring uh, and jump what hoops they got to do to become part of our nation. And this man here was counted worthy because he'd done so much for Israel as a nation. They said to Jesus, he's built our synagogue, and he loves our nation. Help this person out. And we as a people, now we get this opportunity, these two little boys. What a mission opportunity. What a mission opportunity to have kids come. We, we don't want them in the Taliban army and, and being entrained in the evil that's going on over there. And we have an opportunity for kids to come and love our nation and to help build the fabric of our society here. What a uh, wonderful story in this man as they challenge Jesus. Please come. So a high view of all men is a good help to a great affirmation. A good help to a great affirmation. You've got a high view of humanity. But now, what's the view of yourself is the question. And so here we have, uh, it's, it's important to have uh, a low view. A, a low, a low, with low is, a, people say, oh, you, you, that's detrimental to tell people you should have a low view of yourself. Well, if, if it's honest and it's real, then you're going to see yourself as low. If you understand the, the songs we were singing this morning of you are beautiful beyond description to marvelous for words. And when you sit there and see that, uh, we, the greatness of the God that oversees the universe, what's the beauty? it lifts you up and say, well, I'm so wonderful. I'm a child of his. Yes, that's true. But what about you and yourself? 
in contrast to the greatness, you're so small. And it's, it's, it's honest humility is what God likes to see. <clears throat> and my first point with that, having a low view of yourself with honest hu humility, is this, because, uh, uh, and so the, my first point is, because, it's like a kid with candy. You no, know? the kids just went through Halloween and they come and ring the doorbell. They run all over town and they get a bag. My son showed his bag. The kids had had a trunk full of candy uh, from just running out. My first day, my grandkids in Grand Prairie, same story. Candy. They run crazy for candy. <clears throat> a low view of yourself is like kids with candy when God sees that. When God sees humility in the heart of, his pe of people, he wants to draw near. You see, a, a good name is to be had before great riches. And, uh, and if for, for, for a good man, someone would dare to die. And if we're humble and realize that what we only, all that we have has come from God. Why has God given me what he's given me? I haven't earned it. Oh, I've applied myself and whatever and, and whatever. But we are what we are by the grace of God and with the work of God in our lives. And so, beloved... He wants for us to have a low view of self. If you want to have a great con affirmation from God, keep a low view of yourself. See, the disciples came to Jesus and said, oh, when, you, when you get in your kingdom, can we sit here and sit here on your right hand and your left? Jesus says, whoa, guys, that's not even mine to give. That's not mine to give. That's my father's. So I can't give that to you. That was James and John. A little high on themselves. And... He says, I can't give that to you. He, he, he who would be first will be last. He who wants to be great, be the servant. And this idea of being low on ourselves is a good step towards the, having a, a great affirmation with Christ. When God sees humility, he has a hard time. Like a kid with candy, he has a hard time not looking in, a hard time not helping, a hard time not focusing, a hard time not listening to that prayer. Because it comes out of humility. It's not what's in it for me. If I do this, i got to get something extravagant and whatever. God is interested in our needs, not our wants. Wants he gives lots of times. Blessings beyond. But in particular, he's committed himself to taking care of our needs. So when God sees humility, he has a hard time standing back. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29 uh, give you a, let's go to verse 6 first, and then I'll come back to Matthew 11. Then. It says, Now Jesus started on his way with them, and when he was not far from the house, a centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself further. If you've already come somewhere, don't come any closer, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. Well, you wanted me to come and heal your kid. Stand aside, sir. No, sir, no, sir. You're not worthy. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof, he says. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, we know the verse. And it says, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And that's the challenge of that Matthew 11, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and I'm gentle and I'm humble in heart. And the, if, we, if we find ourselves acknowledging and, and striving to be humble, it's very restful. I don't have to keep up to the Joneses if they cut their grass uh, a half inch t uh, shorter than mine. I don't have to keep up to them with the fancy cars and all those things. Why? Because Jesus says, be humble in heart and gentle. And this will find rest for your souls. And so this man says, stop Jesus, come no closer, send out a message to them. He says, don't trouble yourself. Don't trouble yourself. Do you ever come to God in prayer and say, God, it's me again? Oh, it's no sense saying sorry for taking your time because God can hear all things. But the attitude. What's the story of the prodigal? He comes staggering home. And, Father, I, I just need a job. I'm not worthy to be called your son. I threw that all out the window. Would just take me and give me a simple job as a servant? And Father says, not hearing anything of it. Uh-uh-uh, you're my son. Put the ring on his finger. Kill the fatted calf. We're having a party for that which was dead. has come back to life. And he comes home in humility. And, oh, beloved, if we, as a people of God, want to have 
great affirmation with God. It demands that we have a humble heart. Because the proud heart makes God sick. You read your scripture, you pay attention, you read in your Bible, and God sees it. The pride of heart, the Proverbs and all those things, he just he's squishing with his thumb and knocking it down. Arrogance, what it does, it destroys the soul, it destroys society, it destroys all those things. And humility of heart gives rest and peace and lifts up. He loves to hear, don't trouble me. Don't trouble yourself, God. But God, and that's sometimes the devil's lie to play that one. Well, don't talk to God because he don't want to hear you. Yes, he does. But he wants to hear it with the right attitude. He wants to hear it with the right attitude. And then look at verse 7. He says, for this reason, I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. I could have come to you myself and asked. I had the means and whatever. I said, well, I'm not worthy to go over to ask Jesus. Can I have a word with you? Remember, we saw Peter. Peter felt worthy. Well, I'll just come aside, Peter or Jesus, and, and I need to talk to you. This can't happen to you. Uh, you. You can't be, you're not worthy of being put on a cross and dying and all those things. Come listen to me. This man says, I'm not even worthy to come to you. I'm not worthy to come to you. And therefore, I didn't. I called in some favors for my friends and asked them to go. And here they are bringing you. I see you off in the distance. Don't come any further. I'm not worthy to have you under my roof. And I didn't feel worthy to come to you myself. Romans 12, 13. I'm sorry, verse 2 and 3. Good, <laughs> thank you. It looks 13, but it's not. Okay, and, and here Paul's talking. He says, you do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the removing, remo renewing Removing, don't remove your mind. Renewing of your mind. Don't never sacrifice your brains at the door. You go into any meeting, whatever. By the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove that will of God, which is good and acceptable and complete, is that word. Perfect, complete. The guy completing his life. Yeah, this is acceptable and perfect. Complete is the idea. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. So God says, don't be trying to keep up with the Joneses. Work on your mind and have a proper attitude. That the righteous gives and the, and the righteous encourages and spends their time doing those things. And so do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what that will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and complete. Now he goes on to verse 3, and here he says this, and he says, For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself how? More highly than he ought to think, but so as to think with sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. If somebody says, rate yourself on humility, it's not wrong to say, well, I, I sure have work to do, but I, I, I think I'm fairly humble. That's not wrong to say that. But if you run around and brag, I'm, I'm the most humble person in this place. You're not. <laughs> You're the least. Think with sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. See, our humility doesn't, Jesus was, what did he say? He, he, he was called the Son of God, but he didn't find that something, oh, you, you have to understand, I'm the Son of God. He told the Jewish people that because one of the other people were understanding that. But he says it wasn't something they had to grasp and hang on to. He knew who he was. Brother, beloved, humility is knowing who we are in Christ and living up accordingly to that. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 we're told there, now these things happened to them as an example, and they were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. So when you read through your Bible and you see examples of stuff that happened, he says, to understand, these things have happened to be an example for you to learn lessons from. The Bible is full of lessons. It's got lessons on so many things as you read it and read it. And skip reading other books, read your Bible, and it shows examples. And, and Jesus says when, when the, the end times come and, and you're going to give an accounting, he says, you don't have to study up a whole bunch. Open your mouth and the Spirit of God will flow out those things that are necessary if you've got them within your heart and your being from having read them. These things happen to them as examples and they were written for our instruction upon whom the age, ends of the ages have come. But here he goes on from that verse now with that in mind. Examples or whatever. Now verse 12 says this. He says, Therefore let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he does not fall. Let him who thinks he stand take heed. You're set in slippery places any time you think you're, 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 you're pretty safe. Set in slippery places. And let him take heed lest he fall. Verse 
Verse 13 carries on from there. I didn't give you that, Glenn, but 13 talks about temptations and trials. So be careful lest you fall. And then he goes on, because there's no, uh, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He says trials can come. Trials will come in life. And that's important to know. And he says, but you will not be attempted what you, above, beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, God will provide a way of escape. And therefore, people who say, well, the devil made me do it, that's a lie. Because God says, I provided a way of escape. Guess what? You didn't take it. If you do it, you, do, you blew it. If you say the devil made me do it, you blew it. And you just didn't take the way of escape because the word of God says, I promise you there'll be a way of escape. And Joseph in the Old Testament is that story. There's your example. She says, come and sleep with me, Joseph. Runs away, whatever. Ma'am, he says, he has kept nothing in his whole household from me except you. Come and be with me. And she grabs his clothes and he runs naked. And he spends two years in jail because God provided a way of escape and he took it. And he doesn't say, the devil made me do it, sir. I thought he would have been killed or whatever, but he says, I ran naked. He had his conscience to live with him, and he left. The low view of self is a very good step toward a great affirmation. And our third point is this. If you want a great affirmation, have a high view of God. Now, the guy already said that. I'm not worthy of you to come under my roof. He's talking, does he know Jesus is God? Well, um, he might not fully have grasped that story, but uh, here we have, in, back in verse 7, <clears throat> the tail end of that verse. <clears throat> so for this reason, I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But, beloved, here's the high view of God. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And the, the Greek reads, say by a word. Say by a word. Just say something by a word. And, and all I need is one word. Healed. Uh, <clears throat> just, okay. If he says, okay, one word does it. One word does it. <clears throat> That's it. And my servant will be healed. Why this isn't written out this way? The servant word here is lad. It's the word pies from pie, uh, pediatric we get. The word pediatric. Child. My child will be healed. My lad will be healed. It's a, it's a term of endearment. And my lad will be healed if you but say one word. And so, beloved, the high view of God is that we do not need great, show, your, show a sign. And whatever Jesus says, don't ask signs of me. There'll be no sign given. <clears throat> but the sign of Jonah, there's your example. God says, don't run around looking for big signs and all kinds of things. Learn, learn this. That the greatness of our God, God say one word and it's done. One word. Just say okay. I ask you for this. You say okay. You, you promise to supply my needs. I have this bill I can't pay. Okay. God, one word. Okay. His word might be, the neighbor needs some help and he's got $100 for help. That's the same amount as your bill. That's your okay. One word. One word. The greatness of our God. He sits above the circle of the earth. He oversees all the affairs of man. He works all things after the counsel of his own will. And he says to you, to this, through this man's story, this example, not me. one word, God, from you will be the answer to my predicament. My lad, this one whom I love will be healed. Verse 8 says, For I also am a man placed under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and he does it. This man says, Jesus, I know what it's like to have power, but I don't have enough power to deal with this one, and I need your help. Can I have one word? Can I have one word? Don't come under my roof. Just say one word. And beloved, the outcome of that story, I need a higher power. But my issue is I need this child that I love, this slave that I love, this servant that I care about. Because I have this great view of humanity. 
because I, I have this low real, real low of my real view of myself as, as a man of leading a hundred. I'm not worthy to have you under my roof. I have a high view of God and a low view of myself. And beloved, I challenge that much of evangelicalism has got that upside down. I was watching construction down here, and there's big manholes put in. I watched them. They're down there 25 feet and putting in these sewer pipes, and they're three foot in diameter or whatever. And I worked on construction, and I've been crawled around in some of them and whatever. And as you, you know, people today at the top of the manhole, hey, God, can you throw me up a hand? Can you throw me up a word? I'm up here high and mighty. I guess I need a little help. Evangelicalism's got it upside down. God's up there. We're down in the sewers of degradation. The world in which we live and the attitudes we have. And we got it upside down. Can I say one word, God? My servant will be healed if you give me one word. That's a high view of the power of God. The church limps along because we got to fundraise. We got to do all those things. To have God's help do what he tells us to do? No. One word. One word with a proper heart attitude. God does it. You read your book, he does it one word. He doesn't make us beg and, and scream and cry. One word. And he helps. He draws near. Why? Because the humble heart, he can't turn away. He loves to see it. Conclusion. We have here, verse 9. He says here, he says, now when Jesus heard this, he marveled. That's an affirmation in itself, beloved. If we make Jesus marvel, it's a wonder where your kids do something, and you just marvel. And uh, my son's on the phone about his grandkids and my grandkids and his kids and doing stuff and whatever. And when a parent just marvels, they did this and they did this. One day he came home and he says, the kid had my 25-foot tape. It's one of those fat Macs. And he said, they had it down the stairs and they were sliding little cars and mar marbles down there. And that was pretty ingenious, eh? I said, yeah, I taught him to do that when you were away and they were at my house. The parents marvel. When you do something that makes Jesus marvel, that's a good point. <laughs> Hopefully it's good like this. It's good, not somebody stupid. Yeah, Jesus, he marvels at some of the stupid that we see sometimes. Jesus heard this. He marveled at him, and he turned to the crowd, and he was following him. He says, I say to you people, and they're all Jewish, I haven't found this kind of faith in Israel. This is a Roman soldier. And he has a faith I haven't seen among all you people. There's Peter. He hasn't got much faith. I have to tell him, get behind me, Satan. I say to you, not in Israel have I found such great faith. Jesus marvels. And beloved, if we can just marvel Jesus when he's amazed. When we don't think about ourselves, but think about being humble and work to be humble, that amazes Jesus. Faith in the power of the name and the word of Jesus is what saves. It's what accomplishes the work of God. Faith in that. He says, I haven't found such great faith in all of Israel. Faith is the issue. It's faith in Jesus, faith in God with one word, rather than faith in our own abilities and faith of our whatever. And so let us be careful to have a high view of God where one word is an answer to our prayers. Verse 10, we're told, as it closes off and says, when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Are you surprised? Well, Jesus just doesn't cut off the story there, whatever. He, he tells us. It worked out just like it was supposed to happen. He doesn't go to the house, but the people returned to the master, that guy, their friend, and the slave was in good health. How you feeling? Not too bad. Cup of tea? I'm ready to go to work. Uh, hey, maybe take some time off, the boss says. Don't know, but he's in good health. Jesus one word and the faith of that man saw his lad his slave healed and um, you know the story of affirmations seeking a great affirmation the rest of that gospel as you read chapter 7 further you find there's a there's, they talk about John the Baptist what'd you go out to see John the Baptist it says there that uh, 
uh, he, uh, John, did I give you that verse? I read it in there. Uh, 720, I say to you, among those born of women, there's no one greater than John. Yet he who is the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. John's solid and knows where he is. And Jesus knows where he is. He's dead, but he's, Jesus knew where he was. Had a great name. But if you're simply least in the kingdom of God, humbly before God, with enough brains and enough strength and spiritual maturity to say, God, I just need one word. One word. And that least in the kingdom can make you greater than John the Baptist, it says. Quite an affirmation. How to have a good affirmation, a great affirmation from God. Great view of humanity. You're no different than anyone else. Low view of yourself really helps. High view of God. And you can be that person. Matthew 25 words it this way. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Talks about things that people did in serving Jesus. Our closing hymn <clears throat> is coming. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, I want to lean on arms. I can't see them. Yeah, I know. Humility does. Um, pride doesn't. Arrogance doesn't see those everlasting arms. The eternal God is your refuge, Deuteronomy said, and underneath are the everlasting arms. We're challenged to lean on those. Let's sing together our closing hymn. We'll get Glenda dismisses in prayer after we sing. What a fellowship, what a joy divine meaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine meaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all the harms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting Father, just like um, children long for the affirmation from their fathers and their, their parents, uh, we too have a, a longing for that affirmation from you. Um, if we could only have you um, just marvel at our faith, um, we would be blessed, Father. Lord, we know that it all starts with, uh, with an honest humility. Uh, all that we have comes from the grace of God. And uh, just remind us of that this week, Lord, um, that we are made in the image of God. Um, Lord, and we just pray that we would keep a, a lower view of ourselves um, in, a, in a culture that, um, that encourages us to lift ourselves up, um, to promote ourselves, help us to be countercultural, we pray. But that we would also have a high view of you, Lord, um, that uh, you're, you would just grow bigger and stronger and mightier and more wonderful in our minds each day as we learn more about you, as we study our Bible, as we uh, fellowship in the community of faith, Lord. Father, uh, we just... Uh, ask for your, your presence this week. Um, Lord, we, we pray that uh, uh, this week we would receive good news that we can meet again in the house of the Lord and uh, that you would just have your hand um, of influence there, that you give wisdom to our, our leaders of our province and our, and our country. So we just put that in your hands and continue to, to watch what you are doing. So bless us this week, each home and each family. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.